Welcome to worship. My name is Joe Varner, and I get to be the pastor of Thalia United Methodist Church. We're so glad that we get to spend this time with you in worship, wherever you may be. We can't wait for that time when we get to worship together in person, but for now, we are going to persevere and continue to do what we've been doing so that when we return to worship, it's as safe as possible. Today, we've got an important theme. and has to do with endurance. Endurance is the ability to suffer patiently. Now, I want you to think about whatever it might be in your life that you are suffering patiently with. Is there a, a challenge? Is there pain? Confusion? This week we're going to tackle a topic in Scripture from the letter to the Romans about endurance. And so right now, I'm going to invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for being with us right now in the midst of whatever troubles we're walking through. We pray for fresh inspiration from your Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that poured out your love in our hearts through faith, the same Spirit of the one who raised Christ from the dead, that you would elevate our minds beyond our present situation to cling to the hope of the day when Christ shall return, when death will be no more, and when you will wipe every tear from our eyes. We pray right now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts would be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'm going to read from the Apostle Paul, his letter to the Romans, chapter 5. But to set up this passage for you, I want to imagine a group of people from different parts of the world. On one hand, Paul is writing to the Jewish audience of his day, and on the other, he's writing to people uh, who believe in Christ but are not connected to the Jewish family. You know, discrimination has been around for a very long time, and that's a part of the trouble that the church in Romans was dealing with when Paul wrote this letter. And it's a part of the trouble that we're still walking through as a nation, this sort of concept that there are groups of people who, for lots of complex reasons, simply don't get along. And so with that context in mind, I want to invite you to hear these words from Romans chapter 5. Therefore, since we have been made righteous through His faithfulness, combined with our faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have access by faith into this grace in which we stand through Him, and we boast in the hope of God's glory. But not only that. This is the part that I really want you to pay attention to right now. We even take pride in our problems because we know that trouble produces endurance. Endurance produces character and character produces hope. This hope doesn't put us to shame because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. Paul is telling a divided church, a church of people, this mixed bunch who don't always get along at times. He's telling them that not only do we get to boast in the glory that we're going to experience one day. He's talking about this resurrection when we receive new life. He's also talking about the fact that right now we get to boast because of our present struggles. It's important to clarify here what Paul is not saying. Paul's not saying that we should go around and brag about all the things that are wrong in our lives. I can vividly remember stories uh, growing up as kids when, when we would compare scars. Do you know what that's like? I mean, people still do that even in adulthood, don't we? There are times when we'll go through one tragedy after another or we'll sustain one injury or we hang on to this pain and it can turn into resentment and that resentment can turn into pride and we start comparing our pain with other people for some weird reason. And Paul's not talking about that. What Paul is talking about is allowing ourselves to endure suffering for the sake of building Christ-like character so that that character can turn into hope because of the love of God that has been poured out into our lives. 
Paul's talking about endurance, perseverance, this suffering patiently. So what does this look like in the church today? What does it look like in your personal life to boast in your sufferings? Have you ever thought about how we can take whatever trials we're dealing with, whatever trouble, and turn that into something good? The problem there is that it's not something that we can do on our own. It's something that only God can do through us because of the work of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. God can take all of our trouble, all of our pain, and do something very good with it. But I wonder if maybe the trouble is we try so hard on our own to do something good with the pain in our lives when that's just something that we're not fully capable of. So what really is this biblical understanding of endurance? It might help to talk about endurance when it comes to physical exercise. There are endurance sports like triathlons or cyclists or marathon runners. It's a specific sort of niche when it comes to exercise. You know, on one hand, you've got weight trainers and people who are trying to build muscle. On the other, you've got casual uh, exercisers like myself who occasionally go to the gym, who occasionally get out and jog. But then you've got folks who train for long distance runs and triathlons. And it takes a lot of perseverance. It takes a lot of suffering and patience to be able to run a marathon or to compete in a triathlon. It's not something that you can just wake up one day and decide you're just going to go do. That would be a really foolish thing to do. I'm just going to wake up one day and uh, because I said to myself I want to run a marathon tomorrow, I'm going to run a marathon. You can try, but I doubt that many of us would be very successful. So this endurance is this concept that when we're going about our everyday lives, when we're dealing with our struggles, when we're dealing with our pain, is suffering patiently through the pain, knowing that there is a God who goes with us, but most importantly, and this, I believe, is the key to the gospel, the key to our experience of God's grace and goodness in times like this. God endured the worst for our sakes. God is with us in the pain. God identifies with our pain because God knows what it's like to endure great pain. Later on in this passage, Paul goes to describe what this love is all about. And it's a bit graphic for us, but, but it's worth remembering. He says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That proves God's love for us. I want you to let that sink in for a moment. Close your eyes and hear these words once more. While we were yet sinners, while we had missed the mark, while we were completely lost, incapable of saving ourselves, Christ died for us. That proves God's love toward us. It's such a simple message with bold meaning for our lives today. That there's a God who has endured pain, who has been forsaken, who has suffered extensively, all to prove His love for us. The reason that we are able to endure, the reason that we're able to face hardship, persecution, trouble, is because we belong to a God who is willing to endure the same things for our sake. And He showed us that because of Jesus' gift on the cross. So what difference is this going to make in your life today? If you've been wondering where God's been in the mess that we've been walking through the last three months, 
you're in good company. You're not alone. And most importantly, you belong to a God who's already going before you, who's already coming to meet you. Some of you probably know the story of the prodigal son. This was a parable that Jesus taught his disciples, and I think it's helpful for our message today. In Luke chapter 15, you can go and you can read the story of the prodigal son. This, uh, this father had two sons, and one of them decided that he wanted to go ahead and collect his inheritance. In other words, that son was saying, I would rather you die and give me the chance to go off and spend the money that you earned for me. And so the father gives him his inheritance. The son goes off and he squanders all this wealth and it's gotten so bad that he's looking at what the pigs are eating and he's so hungry that he, he envies the pigs. And then the thought occurs to him, I'd have been much better off in my father's house. And so he wonders if he ever mustered up the courage to go back to his father's house if he'd be welcomed back home. And so finally, as the father's at home and he sees from a great distance the prodigal son has returned, the father runs out to meet him. That's what God's love is like. And maybe you've been a prodigal son or a prodigal daughter and you've been a long way from God. And you may be wondering what it is that might be separating you from God. Maybe you've abandoned God many years ago. Maybe you've endured too many trials and tribulations. Maybe your life has been so troubling that you wonder how a good God could allow this to happen to you. But what I want to say to you today is that you belong to a God who knows what it's like to endure pain, who proved His love for you by giving Jesus to give His life, to prove that love. Not because there's something in us that has to earn that love, but simply because you belong to God. And so this week, I hope these words from Paul's letter to the Romans will give you the strength and the courage to sustain you so that you can boast in your suffering. Because we know that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. This hope does not disappoint us because of God's great love that has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Amen. Let's go to God's throne of grace together in prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your great love that has been poured out into our hearts. We thank you for the hope that you've given us for the character that you are building within us, for the endurance that you give us, and for these trials, whatever troubles they may be that we're walking through, the knowledge that you walk with us, that you have the power and the will to turn our troubles into good. And so we pray that you would give your church endurance today. Whatever we may be walking through, help us cling to the knowledge, not just of the hope that we have before us, but of the hope that we have right now, that your love has the power to sustain us no matter what we're going through. And so we pray for your church around the world that we would be empowered to shine your light in the darkness. Help us to cling to the good news of your great love and to walk and live and act accordingly. Pray this all in Jesus' name as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you have a prayer request that you'd like to share with us, if you feel like you need somebody to pray with you because of something you're going through right now, I would encourage you to reach out. You can message us directly on Facebook or head to our website and you can contact me and whatever you put in your contact on the website will go directly to my inbox and I'd be happy to reach out to you if you've got something going on in your life that you need to talk to somebody about. So I encourage you to pray with us this week right now.
we're going to move into the part of worship that we call our offering. This is a chance where we get to offer ourselves and our gifts to God's purpose in the world. This is an act of worship. And so I want to help you name and identify your spiritual gifts because our offering is much more than our financial stewardship. We believe that it's very important for all of us as disciples of Jesus Christ to set that 10% goal as like the starting point of our generosity, of our act of discipleship, of giving back a portion of what we've been given to God's work in the world. But stewardship is much more than our financial responsibility. It's also about using the gifts God has given us for God's purposes. So maybe you've got a gift of teaching. Maybe you've got the gift of communication or administration. During our offertory today, during our music as we listen, I want to encourage you to take this time to offer your gifts to God's grace today, to be a part of God's mission of shining a light in a world of darkness as we help each other follow Jesus. Let's worship God now with ourselves and our gifts. Having been filled with the goodness of God's love, may you go now in peace to love and serve the Lord in all that you do. And may the love of God the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. <laughs>